Deborah Norville, reporter, journalist, best-selling author, humanitarian, knitter. An extensive list of credentials, Norville has done a lot of things during her career, starting from nothing but working hard to become successful. Born on August 8, 1958, in Dalton, Georgia, she had her first experiences in television when she was in high school. When I was in high school, I was in a competition that was televised by CBS. And I saw the guys who were putting the lights up and rigging the cameras and working like dogs from 8 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night, and I thought what they did looked like fun. But I really wanted to be a lawyer, and the reason I was jazzed about being a lawyer was I love research. And so I thought, well, if you did research and you did production, you'd probably be a TV reporter. So I came into it because it looked like fun. Getting her broadcast start in radio, Norville soon discovered that journalism was something she really wanted to do. My very first job in broadcasting was radio. At my local radio station, Christmas break of my freshman year in college, I would go at 4 o'clock in the morning and I would do the police blotter news. You go to the police station, you got the booking sheet of anybody who got arrested, and I would read live on the radio. It was literally just on the telephone. Last night at 3.42 in the morning, Sam Smith was brought in on a charge at DUI. At Thanksgiving, I'd come home from college and there was a new FM station on my radio. And I waited till the top of the hour to hear where this station was located. It was the next county over. So I picked up the phone. I said, I'm a journalism student at the University of Georgia. I'd love to come and talk to you about pot potentially getting a summer job. And so that summer, I worked at this automated FM radio station. Soon after her stint as a local radio personality, she began reporting for WAGA TV in Atlanta, and then was able to interview then President Jimmy Carter. January of my senior year, Jimmy Carter was president, and he had returned to Atlanta to receive the Martin Luther King Peace Prize. And the way it works when the president is ever in town, there's the national press on one side of a rope and the local press on the other side. And so I'm in with the local press scrum and all the national guys over there and, and the motorcade comes and we go, the president's arriving, the president's arriving. We're coming to you live. Hello everybody, Deborah Norville here outside blah 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 restaurant. President Jimmy Carter has just arrived. He's in town today to accept the Martin Luther King Peace Prize and I'm talking to the camera and as I'm talking to the camera, Jimmy Carter walks up to me. I'm like, oh my God. I asked whatever the question was. He answered the question. The deal is he's supposed to keep going right? He's the president. You don't chit chat with them stupid little girl in Atlanta. No one told Jimmy Carter what the rule was and the president didn't move on. And I'm like, I only had one question for him. I didn't have a follow-up because I knew I was never going to get to ask the first question. So the only thing I could think of was, how is it to be home? And the president went on and on and on and on about how great it is to be home and his favorite dish at the restaurant. And as I recall, it was about four hours that he took to respond to me. It just was interminable. And, and finally, mercifully, he, I guess his stomach growled and he realized he needed to go in and eat. And I said, well, thank you so much, Mr. President. Congratulations. I know your friends are looking forward to seeing you. After graduating from the University of Georgia, Norville was named weekend anchor on WAGA-TV. Then, in 1982, she joined WMAQ-TV in Chicago, first as a reporter, then an anchor. Five years later, she joined the NBC News team as an anchor for NBC News at Sunrise. It's a very different thing when you know, when you're sitting in front of that camera, that it's not just the people in one town, but the people in the entire country. You acknowledge that fact and you move on. The only thing that's different is you're in a different room. It takes a little while to kind of get just comfortable to it, then you just do what you do. During her run of NBC News at Sunrise, she was a frequent guest on the Today Show and eventually landed a permanent position as co-anchor on the Today Show. I think one of the reasons they moved me over to Today was the ratings had gone up so much on Sunrise. The first three months I was there, ratings went up 40%. Bosses tend to notice things like that. Receiving mixed reviews, she held the job until the birth of her first child in 1991. Eventually broadcast on more than 200 ABC radio network stations, she returned to her career with The Deborah Norville Show. After staying with the job for about two years, she joined CBS News in 1993 as a correspondent and later anchor for Street Stories, 48 Hours, and CBS Evening News. Finally, in 1995, she replaced Bill O'Reilly on Inside Edition, a position she still holds today. CBS kept changing things around. I was hired as a correspondent on Street Stories. They kept putting us on hiatus, then they killed that show. So this was just whatever the successor show was. She has won awards for the stories she covered, like the Democratic Uprising in Romania. That was a really cool story. And um, 
That particular Emmy was particularly meaningful to me because it came at a time when I was under a press barrage, having just replaced Jane Pauley on the Today Show. There had been a lot of negative press that I had gotten the job because I was younger and I was blonder and all of these things that had nothing to do with my ability as a reporter. So there was a certain sense of personal validation in getting that. As well as her coverage of the Mississippi flood. And anytime anybody looks at your work in comparison with the great work of your peers and your competitors and they say, that was one of the best things that happened this year in broadcast journalism, the thrill is fantastic. It's what you do it for. As well as reporter and journalist, she was later able to add a musician to her repertoire after writing and performing a song, then filming a music video. <laughs> it was a blast. It's a lot longer. Uh, I mean, you guys have been here in the studio. We do a 30 minute show in 30 minutes. It's live on the satellite. It goes out to all the little places it goes. We're done. Music video is excruciating long, as is anything in film production, because this was a typical film production thing. So you had, I don't know how many wardrobe changes, you shoot the same line of song, umpteen different camera angles, um, because we didn't have the benefit of having five cameras, so we'd move around with you know maybe the one or two cameras and get different angles. So it's a much more laborious process. Um, but the end result was a blast. To round off her lovely experience meeting a journalism great, Norville was able to offer advice to the next generation of reporters and journalists. My advice to anyone who thinks they want to be in this business, start writing. Start writing right now. Journal every day. Write about what you feel. Write about what you know. Write about what you've observed. If you think you want to be a news reporter, pretend to be a news reporter. Give yourself the assignment to write a 30-second story on the speaker at your assembly today. And if you want to, pull out your phone and record that person and then pick the 15 second sound bite that would be the sound bite you would use. Imagine what you would do if you were actually editing a story. Most kids have, the, you guys certainly do, have the access to the equipment to be able to tell stories, to edit stories. You think it's what you want to do? Don't wait till you're a grown up. Start doing it now. If you think you want to be a writer, the only way to become one is to write. Every time I feel I've made some ground, I assume somebody's there to put me down. But I know my time will come around if I just keep on. And that's the story from here back to you.